All right, this is the video on the remaining problems from the 2.3 notes that we skipped over in class. So we're looking at some of the different methods that we learned how to use to solve quadratics. And the first one that we skipped over was part B on example one, because we did the other two factoring ones in class. So we're going to look at this one right now. So remember to factor and solve, we have to get everything on one side and get it all in a standard format. So the first thing I usually start with, since this is not set equal to zero, is I distribute this out. So this would be 8x squared plus 30x equals 27. We'll go ahead and move over the 27 by subtracting it. And then this is a factor by grouping problem, so we need to do 8 times the 27, which is 216. And it is negative since it was a negative 27. So we're going to list factors of 216. So 1 and 216, 2 and, if you're not sure, just use division to find it out if it goes. So that's 108. 216 divided by 3 is 72. 216 divided by 4 is 54. 216 divided by 5 doesn't work, but by 6 is 36. 216 divided by 7 probably does not work. Nope. 216 divided by, oops, that's times. Divided by 8 is 27, so they're getting closer together. 216 divided by 9 is 24. 216 divided by 10 doesn't work. 11 doesn't work. Divided by 12 is 18. So there's a lot of factors here. Um, 216 divided by 13, I believe, does not go. 216 divided by 14 does not go, 15 won't go, and 16 is not going to go either. So 17 also doesn't go. Um, you could check all of those, but this is our complete list. So we're looking for factors that multiply to negative 216 but add to positive 30. So if you multiply to a negative, you have to be different signs. So the only way we're going to make 30 is using the 6 and the 36. And we'd want the 6 to be negative and the 36 to be positive to get a positive 30. So remember, our next step is to write this with the middle expanded. So I'm going to put the plus 36 first. It doesn't matter which one you put first. Minus 6x minus 27 equals 0. We would pull out a GCF out of each group. We can pull out a 4 x out of the first pair, and if we divide that out, that would be a 2x and a plus 9. Pull out a negative 3 out of the second pair. That would also leave me with a 2x, and divide a negative by a negative, you get a positive 9. Our parentheses match, so we get a 2x plus 9 and a 4x minus 3. Notice I keep bringing down my equal to 0. So I've now factored it, and now I'm going to solve. You said each part equal to 0 and get x by itself. So subtract 9, divide by 2. So negative 9 halves is one of my solutions. And then 4x minus 3 equals 0. We would add 3 and then divide by 4, so 3 fourths. And there are my two solutions for that one. Uh, we did all of the square root method problems in class, so we can skip over that. We did both of the completing the square problems in class, so we're good there. The only thing that was left was a couple more of the quadratic formula ones. So we did A together, and we need to do the remaining two or three that were in this group before the application problem. So for this, we're looking at something that doesn't quite look like a quadratic, but it does have the setup that it's one fraction on each side with an equal sign in between them. So we can cross multiply. I am going to make a note about some restrictions before I do this, though. Um, because I have a 3x plus 2 in one denominator, we don't want negative 2 thirds. That's subtracting 2 and dividing by 3. And 2x minus 3, we don't want to equal 0 either because it's this denominator. So that means we don't want to add 3 divided by 2. So we don't want 3 halves to be a value as our final answer either. 
Now that probably won't be our answers, but we just need to check those because remember if a restricted value pops up as the answer, it is not correct. So if we cross multiply, this would be x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 equals x minus 2 times 3x plus 2. If we distribute or FOIL, this would be 2x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 3 equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 6x minus 4. Combining like terms, we get a negative x in the middle on this side and a negative 4x on this side in the middle. I would move everything over to the right this time because we want to keep our x squared positive. So we're going to subtract over 2x, so that'll be just x squared. We're going to add this x over, so that'll be negative 3x. And we're going to add the 3 over, so that's negative 1. So now we want to do quadratic formula on this. So remember, x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So my a is a 1 because there's nothing in front, so it's understood to be a 1. My b is a negative 3, and my c is a negative 1. So x equals negative b would be a positive 3 plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So then I work out my inside of my radical first. That would be a 9, and this is negative 4 times 1 times negative uh, 1. So that's actually going to end up being a positive 4. So my answer looks like it's going to be 3 plus or minus the square root of 13 all over 2. Um, and that would be good. That's, that's reduced because all of the outside numbers, the 3, the 1, and the 2, they have nothing in common, and the radical has no perfect square factors. All right, let's look at C. I would start by moving the 16 squared over so that this looks more like a traditional trinomial, which we have to be in standard form to use quadratic formula. So my A here is 16, my B is 24, and my C is 9. So this would be X equals negative B, so that would be negative 24, plus or minus square root the regular B squared minus 4 A C all over 2A. Okay, so 24 squared is 576. And then this is negative 4 times 16 times 9. And then we add that or subtract that answer, depending on if it comes out positive or negative, from the part that was squared. That's the number minus itself, so that's going to end up being a 0 on that square root. So this is negative 24 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 32. So really, the square root of 0 is nothing. So this is just a singular answer of negative 24 over 32, because if you add 0, you get nothing different. If you subtract 0, you're still going to be negative 24. So then if we reduce that, that would be negative 3 fourths. So this is actually a multiplicity of 2. This answer occurs twice if you were to, if you could have solved it. It only occurs once for us here. Um, but the plus case and the minus case, and it's the same answer twice. Now, what that means is if you graphed this, and this is just kind of a rough sketch, if the x-axis is here, that parabola only touches it once at the vertex. So that's kind of what we're graphing or talking about when we say there's a singular answer. And that only happens when your square root under your uh, quadratic formula is 0. All right, and then the final one in this packet, we need to solve D. So I would get everything on one side first. So I'm going to move that um, 4 sevenths over by subtracting it. And that's a squared. So 4 sevenths, 1 seventh, x, and then we still have our plus 1 equals 0. I would multiply everything by 7 on both sides to clear out those fractions. So that's just going to be x squared minus 4x, this will be 1 times 7, so that'll be 7, equals 0. So my a is 1, my b is negative 4, and my c is 7. So this is x equals negative b, so that'd just be a positive 4, plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So 
I have no idea why that looks like a negative 14 inside there. Hang on just a second. So that's negative 4 squared. So that's 16. This is negative 4 times 7, so that's going to be negative 28. So this case is kind of interesting because we get a negative underneath our radical. So 16 minus 28 is negative 12. Now that is not a real number. So in this specific section, 2.3, we don't answer these. If there is a negative underneath the radical, that's not a real number. Now if you get into section 2.4, which is where we go next, you then know that that's an imaginary number and we actually reduce it down to something we can use. So this is an answer we will eventually give something else for, but right now since this is the only thing we know, it is considered not a real number. So we can't do, we would say no real solutions for this one. We will be able to define that a little bit better in the next section. And that's the end of the 2.3 video.